Next this year. Invitation. Outstanding. Learning a language is harder than some other subjects. I think they have to make it more fun. I think we learn better because it's more active and more enjoyable. Ich hasse Katzen. Ich denke, Hund ist besser als Katze. So it's as if you're actually just having a normal conversation with your friends, but in a different language. No es sociable o activo, pero es muy divertido. To see the kids using language in this very spontaneous and authentic way, it is thrilling. Wilden School is one of the largest in Hampshire. Like many schools, it's had to adapt to attract pupils to the now non-compulsory MFL courses it offers. Like most schools, GCSE results got better when the MFL courses became optional in 2004. Since then, by researching and implementing a handful of simple strategies, year on year, its results have kept improving. Over a six-year period, results improved by almost 40%, peaking in 2008 with just over 90% of pupils attaining A star to C. So, how have they achieved this? To raise achievement, um, we needed to really think about raising motivation. And what we needed to do was to make languages a department that children wanted to be in and to be seen to be in. Traditionally, drama and art were the cool departments. Everybody wanted to be there. We needed to make languages something that children could be part of, both in and out of the classroom. Ofsted has regularly targeted speaking as the least well-developed of language skills. The GCSE speaking exam is probably one of the hardest exams that pupils have to sit and it is very daunting. And the problem is, even if you work really hard and you're a really studious pupil, you can't just go away and revise your speaking. Wilden recognised a need for improvement and created an award-winning and hugely successful scheme to tackle it. Well, did we get some interesting, interesting chat going there? Yeah. It's called group talk, and it focuses on pupils' ability to interact in target language. Also, zum Beispiel, Chris Brown ist auf der Karte. Und die Frage ist, was denkst du über Chris Brown? Okay, ich denke, meiner Meinung nach. Also, in Gruppen werdet ihr besprechen, was auf den Karten steht. Okay? Erste Person beginnt. Zum Beispiel, Chris Brown. Andy Sharp sagt... Meiner Meinung nach ist Chris Brown ärgerlich. Topics are hotly debated within small groups and pupils confidently give their opinion on a range of subjects. Alice Kleiners. Let's go. Super. No, je ne suis pas d'accord. Je n'aime pas la deuxième. Parce que c'est horrible. Muy activo et muy sociable. Que va? Videojuegos es... No es sociable o activo, pero es muy divertido. ¿Stimmt das, Ali? ¿Sind Katzen ok? Debates are kicked off using a number of different stimuli, and topics are chosen that are relevant to pupils. Here's Dana Katze. Thank you. What do you think you're Ralph in heaven? Um, Ralph is schrecklich. You can't say Ralph. What do you think you're Ralph? Ralph is doof and sehr ungesund. And Ali? Yeah, that stimmt. That is sehr schrecklich, Ralph. Recently we've been doing, um, talking about clothes and fashion and stuff like that, so you'd, you'd like that, so it's easy to talk about that anyway. You're talking about the stuff that you would usually talk about anyway, so we may as well do it in German. <laughs> All MFL classrooms had to be rearranged to make them more conducive to group talking. Este fin de semana voy a montar el bicicleta. Mi lieblingsfach es um, sport. Yo quiero sport. Yeah. Yeah. Yo prefiero yeah. la music. Once given a starting point, groups are allowed to progress their own topics under a watchful eye. No, I mag not Jacko. Mags do Jacko? I actually find I'm, I'm much more fully aware of their speaking potential and competence than I ever was in the past, because what group talk allows you to do is actually visit particular tables and gain a pretty good insight into individual capabilities with speaking. What are you doing this week? We listen music MSN. If we talk about kids off task, we, we generally know in a classroom which tables those are, and that, that's our role to actually 
go and g those tables up in a positive way and keep them on task. ¿Y qué idiomas hablas? Hablo francés. Perfecto. Group talk is now at the heart of language teaching, and new staff arrivals are quickly helped to incorporate it into their own lessons. Well, at the beginning, it was a bit sort of scary, if that's the adjective that I can use, because um, I didn't really know what sort of structure to follow to make sure that I, I use this group talk um, properly. Uh, but it was a question of building up, building up um, these uh, sort of sentences, and um, from sentences, we got into the sort of more complex structures. For new teachers, they've got the experienced practitioners around them, like myself and the others in the department, who are for whom group talk is actually, you know, everyday classroom teaching now. It will feature in a lot of lessons. So we do a lot of peer observations. OK, new staff will be able to go in and see it in action straight away. A new member of staff, I would guess, would have a pretty good idea and would be doing it with their classes within the, their first term of teaching. Groups are given cue cards to help them progress the conversations. Staff have moved away from traditional teaching tools and found more fun items to stimulate debate. If you have a look at the top shelf, this is what every uh, MFL school uh, department, Stock Howard, will look like. This year, we've got a budget of about uh, 500 pounds, and we haven't spent uh, one single penny on textbooks. And uh, we believe in investing in resources which promote um, active and dynamic learning. These weeks, they are fantastic. When we are teaching household chore, we have items like this, like a hoover, this, an iron, and we are on business. Absolutely love it. It's easier because um, you're able to um, help each other rather than just try to do it on your own and get stuck. Group talk is used by Year 7 pupils in a simple form, with progressively more complicated linguistic structures introduced throughout Key Stage 3 and 4. Starting the pupils' group talk education early on has also been part of the reason the school has seen a marked improvement in their pupils' GCSE speaking exam. Uh, yeah, ich liebe Gummibären, aber meine Lieblingsfarbe ist das Grüne. Although when you see it happening, it looks very unstructured, seemingly, like anything in languages which has that end result, there's actually a hell of a lot of structure and thinking and planning, careful planning that goes behind it. So we have a clear progression chart of stage one, stage two, up to stage four in group talk. Ich denke, Frauke ist Dorf. I think it'll be a lot better with our exam. We'll be a lot more confident with the speaking part because doing as much as we do, we still end up doing writing and listening because we're listening to him and listening to each other. So that's still the listening side of the exam and speaking it. We're a lot more confident. What we see before us now, produced by a lot of hard work, is actually very inspiring to see the kids using language in this very spontaneous and authentic way. It is thrilling. Okay, and it certainly put something back into my career. Qui veut venir au tableau pour répondre? Key to the success of new strategies has been a consistency of approach across the department. Excellent, perfecto. Otro voluntario. If it's not done as a department, it will fall flat on its face because kids change teachers, they move from one environment to another. We pool our ideas and we share our good practice. We're a very young and dynamic department and lots of people are into the new technology. Vamos a ver, ahora, ahora, vamos a practicar la conversación. Our money will go to interactive resources, uh, DVD, listening, audiovisual material, but also to props, things which really bring the language alive. En parejas, y yo voy a grabar, voy a grabar la conversación. Mario, muy bien. ¿Qué significa en inglés? Repite otra vez. The pupils love the whiteboards. When you do a whiteboard activity, they all have their hand up and they love to come and actually move the words around and, and work things out. It's great for putting things in order for thinking skills. And uh, because it's bright and colourful, it really attracts their attention. The department has also made a concerted effort to target the cohort of pupils known to show less interest in MFL courses. 
Well, as an idea. My theory, whether it's right or wrong, is that um, as a general rule, the girls will learn any rate. So that's, of course, that's a generalisation. But if we look to the boys, if you don't get the boys on your side, OK, they won't learn as a matter of course, regardless of styles. To fully engage boys, the MFL teachers had taken active learning to extremes. Like any teacher, one of our major hurdles to overcome is the idea of tents. I thought, yeah, we need to walk the timeline. We're walking forward into the future, we're walking back. We need points of time. Next this year. Like next week, next year, yesterday. And the kids actually need to walk that timeline. Another popular activity with the pupils is the time ballet. I mean, telling the time, we all know we try and teach it to some kids in Year 7 in the foreign language and they're struggling with it in English. It's, it's a difficult area. Classes will just demand to do the time ballet at the end of a lesson. It's fantastic. I think we learn better because it's more active and more enjoyable. And if it wasn't as active, then you'd probably go a bit off task. If. Do. And it's very important to have motivational moments that kids remember. And if they remember motivational moments, they will work much harder and do the boring stuff along the line as well. We all know that motivation leads to improved results. So active learning, as well as achieving something in itself, does provide a lot of motivational moments for covering the boring stuff later, getting kids on your side, if you like. Expensive! Competition and challenge are also key tactics in the battle to get boys on board. <laughs> Invitation! Zeitung! Our motto is competition and challenge, not chalk. Van Hagen, Castle! Schloss! Nathan! Nathan! <laughs> We may leave vocab alone for a fair amount of time, and then suddenly I will select, say, 40 words <laughs> and say, right, here's the challenge. Yeah. Without doubt, I've got kids knowing words that I never would expect them to know and using it in their work. It's fantastic. And that's all through the idea of challenge and competition to motivate the learning of words. The fact that we're competing against each other, it almost, like, it gives us more reason to want to learn. An so, incentive like, to an incentive to learn. want to win and learn the words and keep it, it keeps it in our head. These strategies are not just about making the lessons more fun, though. They've had a direct impact on boys' attainment. Dom, at World and School, it's still quite an achievement that we are getting parity in the performance of the boys and the girls. In fact, <laughs> I mean, in my subject, German, the boys actually outperformed the girls in the last couple of years. Next this year, Gay and Ince Kino. For resources to help incorporate this style of teaching and the department's top tips on how to improve MFL GCSE results, visit www.teachers.tv. It's really about understanding why children need to learn languages. It's about giving them the bigger picture and a feel for what a language looks and sounds like and what it's like to be part of a, a, an environment where different languages are spoken rather than just trying to be successful in your classroom.